Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Block. I am John Velociraptor Guerrero, as always, and with me today is Stephen Dream King Chavez. We have a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on in the world of Street Fighter VI. As you probably know, today is the first day of Season 2. We have Akuma, yes, 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 but that's not who we're talking about today. We're going to do our best, at least. We're talking about some of the most important changes that we're seeing to the rest of the cast as every single character has had nerfs and or buffs well not always and or <laughs> applied to them so the whole game is getting shaken up there are some general mechanical changes happening so it's day one we're trying to figure out what this all means of course a lot's going to fall through the cracks but we're going to do our best here some of these characters have floated up to the top of our focus and in terms of how interesting they are and what we think are going to move and shake about them uh we've got a lot to get to here but um i'm going to turn it over to steven right uh, right off the bat steven how are you feeling just mm. very initially about season two yeah um season two updates definitely very interesting um we have spent i think the last like six hours plus just kind of digging into these patch mm -hmm. notes there's so much to get to here and like everybody else we're trying to kind of figure out what's going on uh we will um preface this by saying of course um we need to see how all of this is actually applied in game and stuff like that uh to kind of hammer down what's really happening but right now we're going to give our you know, best read on the situation based on what we've seen in the patch notes uh, to try to help make sense of this stuff as you guys are doing the same right now. Exactly. And I think the first place that everybody wants to go is what happened to the big three of season one. That's Luke, that's Ken, and that's JP, at least before February, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with them, and I think we'll begin with Luke. He, uh, he's got both buffs and nerfs. And, um, well, I'll, I'll turn it over to you first, Steven. I have some thoughts on Luke, but uh, I, I want to hear what you have to say on him because, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, um, Luke definitely got some, some interesting changes. I think one of the biggest changes he got was his crouching medium punch. Uh, it's easier to whiff punish now. I believe it scales harder now uh, from when it, you know you combo into it and stuff like that, or combo from it, I should say. Um, I think jumping heavy punch remained kind of the same. Uh, I think the hurt box is extended downward a little bit, but I think it still has the godly hit box. Um, so he's probably still yeah, got gonna... both of his jumping heavy mm -hmm. attacks. The the heavy punch and the heavy kick both have bigger hurt boxes. I believe they're still both anti air invincible or mm -hmm. not not um I'm sorry not uh, anti air invincible. I think projectile. We've been doing yeah. this for a while, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They have some projectile invincibility for the jumping attacks there, but it's interesting to see the changes that they made to that normal specifically because uh, the big issue with it has been that he can bait you into a throw neutral jump and hit you like when he's really high up in his jump arc there uh and so you get punished really hard with that and him and ken were able to do that uh very effectively and, and kind of uniquely above everybody else and they nerfed the hurt box on it but not the hit box so generally i feel like that's gonna be the same kind of deal um because i don't think it was a case of like He's stuffing your anti-airs. I think it's just a case of the range at, w at which it hits and the angle and stuff is really difficult to deal with and you get hit like right away. Um, so I don't know if that's going to change anything there. It feels like he still has that godly button, but what did change is his crouching heavy punch, which got a ton of nerfs as yes. well. Uh, so it's going to be less effective as an anti-air and stuff like that. So uh, I think I saw Mena commenting on that, basically saying that, that button got, uh, it got, you know, nerfed pretty hard. So. We'll kind of see where that goes, but um, he also got some uh, added tools. He got a uh, combo out of, I believe, Standing Fierce into um, Light Perfect uh, Flash Knuckle is now a true combo and stuff like that. So uh, I think I saw he can do some weird baiting stuff with uh, DI uh, doing that uh, block string as well. So he's got some stuff. Um, in terms of the big three, I kind of feel like luke is the medium porridge he's kind of in the middle yes. of the big three and we're going to talk about these other characters here in a minute but um what else are you seeing for luke there so if he were head and shoulders above everybody else and i i do think that that's where he was in season one there's a clear intent for capcom to keep him up in the general top tiers but he might have fallen down into somewhere around top five they wanted to make sure that if they were going to take away, and they did, that they were also going to give him back some other stuff. And what they did was they encouraged more his uh, follow-ups to some of his uh, OD specials, you know, the DDT, the extended 
fireball, for instance, there's more reason to use those maneuvers, and you rarely saw those unless they were going to kill um, beforehand, but now they're, they're wanting you to use those more, so they buff them up in certain ways, so they'll build more meter, or they'll sap more gauge, or they'll do more damage, things along those lines. Um, he's got a little bit more utility in things like his standing heavy punch. That might be his single biggest buff. His mm. standing heavy punch is now plus one on block instead of minus one. A little more utility there. Uh, but what they definitely did do, and this is what I'm happiest to see, is that they attended to some of his most problematic abilities. Crouching medium punch. Everyone and their mother talking about crouching medium punch. Well, it has been nerfed. It's got a bigger hurt box in front of it. Um, and I'm sorry, the hit box is reduced. And it scales more, so if he uses it, it's not going to be as effective um, either getting it to hit or after it has mm -hmm. hit. Um, his, his uh, what was it, you said we talked about his jumping normals. Mm -hmm. eh, they may or may not have been super attended to, but what was was his back heavy kick. Um, nice. If that used to be one of those sequences where you know you get to punish counter, you just back heavy kick into drive rush into back heavy kick again into more, and just the damage was just flowing out of that. Well, now he can't it, because it knocks back further. Uh, even on punish counter, you can't do back heavy kick DRC into back heavy kick into more of the business. You're going to have to change up combo routes like that. And what I think that plus the fact that his crouching light punch was nerfed and light punches are generally nerfed, so the characters that have to to rely on using light punches to start or to extend combos are naturally going to do less damage and Luke is to an extent one of those characters you're gonna see less damage coming out of some of his key combos now he might have such a deep bench that it's okay he'll just figure out different routes around <laughs> that that kind of a thing could happen but from where we're standing right now and with where these nerfs are on paper it does look like his problem areas have been attended to so I feel like Luke will fall a little bit as others come up too and in this whole new so oh, this whole new sort of uh atmosphere of street fighter 6 i would guess he'll fall somewhere in the top five but he's not going to be matter of fact top one anymore well it's funny that you mentioned the finding the alternate uh combo routes for the back heavy kick punish uh, the punish counter stuff because i believe it was mana that already put out a, a new combo for that and i think he just goes straight into forward heavy kick the the knee and then he gets crouching medium punch and can drive rush cancel from that and it's still like the whole combo into level three does like over 6k still um so it looks yeah, like see, it's still you you, and, exactly so you that's the thing with luke it's like they nerfed some stuff, but I feel like he has enough to where the Luke players are going to adjust and still make him very strong. Uh, like you said, probably dropping out of just for sure number one and being somewhere in the top five is sounds about right. Again, we have to see how this all plays out and we have to see what Akuma is going to do and all these different things. But right now, based on kind of what we're seeing on paper and, and from what we've seen uh, being applied in game, it feels like he's going to be worse but not by a ton he's still going to be very viable uh still likely very strong uh which is probably exactly what capcom wanted from him you know just tone him down a bit which hey that might even you know that might end up being the trick for him right and, and hopefully this results in just not everybody playing luke and uh, again we're probably going to see a ton of akuma now but he's going to take that place yes. but uh, i don't know if he'll take the place at number one but luke should be somewhat worse now uh and probably somewhere in the top five and not guaranteed top one we hope. Again, we got to see the adjustments that the pro loop players make because all of that stuff might have just been like, oh yeah, now we found some new stuff that works even better. It's like, well, all right. <laughs> I got to say that for some characters, as I'm trying to reason or understand the reasoning behind how they were altered, sometimes it feels like Capcom just wants this character to be really good or just wants this character to not <laughs> be really good mm -hmm. and uh, one of those characters and luke kind of feels like he fits into that but ken after seeing these changes definitely fits into that capcom wants this character to be pretty dang good because i mean can argue whether or not he was a top fiver before a lot of people put him in the top three some people uh like a lot of pros put him outside the top five which i still think is absolutely bonkers but i'm looking at the changes now and i think ken had more buffs than he had nerfs which and and not only that they buffed his jinrai kicks mm -hmm. like that's some that's one of the moves that felt like it was the most problematic that would be like seeing luke get his crouching medium punch buffed as opposed to nerfed or even mm -hmm. just left alone and i'm going what jinrai kicks hurt box is now reduced so it's harder to whiff punish the hitbox is expanded so it's easier for him to hit you 
and he lops off more drive gauge or chips away more drive gauge when you block and how, how often are we blocking these crazy kicks all the time right so one of his key tools is already better um a lot of his run mechanics i think they want you to focus if you're a ken player more on doing the run so things like crouching medium kick run into dp is now true and you can combo all that and he gets uh, better oki well, after that uppercut too by the way so now in in neutral he can essentially hit confirm into crouching medium kick into running dp and then get better oki and it's like what when was well why why would you do that like that seems so bizarre to me like he already right. running uppercut was already good for combos and damage and stuff like that but like now he's gonna be able to like one of the biggest issues of this game has been crouching medium kick into drive rush right like that's such a big thing right that is such a telltale sign of a strong character ken had that for sure crouching medium kick has been incredible for him now you go okay let's give him running uppercut from crouching medium kick which you should be able to confirm in neutral i'd imagine and then you get oki on top like okay season two let's do it i guess right i mean why not right and and wasn't there a uh, crouching medium kick now has better potential for like some kind of a juggle that that seemed a little bit weird but like the fact that they're buffing yeah i think that's probably um for him. probably for like drive rush juggle combos and stuff like that like probably yeah. adding a little bit more there which again i mean if i were a ken player i'd be like yeah i'll take that sure but i would i would take that as lily for sure <laughs> Odi Tatsu does more damage and and has more juggle points. Dude, they didn't um, they didn't nerf Dragon Lash kick. Heavy Dragon Lash did not get any changes. No. Like they, again, if you looked at the big three and were like, what were their most problematic moves? Luke would be crouching medium punch for sure, jumping heavy punch for sure. Ken would be Jinrai kicks is what one of the biggest struggles people have against that character, and then Dragon Lash and just went completely unchanged i mean they changed the od version i believe so that he has to use that for side switch now but it's like okay like no no changes to heavy dragon lash all right it feels like there's definitely more that like there was more buffer room for him to fall a little bit and be okay and they didn't even go into that area they they did give him a few nerfs od fireball scales more and he can basically use od fireball when he's tired of using other kind of more risky ways of getting in that are really good he can just go to od fireball and drive rush behind it and that's extra super good too but now if that combos it's going to do more scaling so there's that and then his medium punch heavy punch target combo has a smaller cancel window which means he can just be a little uh well he's a little more predictable when he is doing that for mm -hmm. what that's worth i don't know how much that's going to manifest in making the character worse but like those are his two big nerfs as far as i could see did i miss any other are there more because i feel like uh, that's just for for what this character was he didn't necessarily gain the most but considering that he was on that chopping block and he avoided that axe, you know, so to speak. In a way, he's a big <laughs> winner for just not losing sure. things and then actually getting buffs to one of his problem moves. So, right. yeah, I don't know, man. Ken, um, if he wasn't top five before, he's gonna be top five now. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay, you, you do have to consider, though. We do have to consider that this is all in a new atmosphere. Yes, that is. Yeah. Raw drive rush is more interceptable, shall we say, because there's gonna be a bigger hurt box in front of characters. And a bigger throw box on it, drive too. rushing in, mm -hmm. and a bigger throw box, right. And then if you're, like I said earlier, if you, if you do a lot of jabs and, and light attacks in your combos, which Ken does a little bit of, then you are going to have more damage and those combos aren't going to do as much. But this is a character that had really strong neutral that would get that hit, take you to the corner, and then put you into mix-ups in the corner. And that still widely seems to be there. Uh, wake up drive reversal might be nice against characters that corner you quickly. So maybe that'll nerf him more than it helps him a good bit. And he's already got wake up options. So he wasn't really hurting for mm -hmm. defensive options. Maybe that hurts Ken a little bit, but on, uh, you know, at the end of the day man this character dodged the nerf bat hard well that's that's the interesting thing about this is that if you played any of the big three uh in season one the best case scenario you would potentially hope for is like they didn't nerf my character that much and like maybe he got a couple nerfs and he stayed in most of the same that's usually what you want to hope for but they not not only did they do that for ken they added buffs on top of him to one of the characters that was one of the most problematic and one of the most represented and they gave him buffs too like okay sure again i'm kind of like you know uh, for a lot of the things that they've changed in season two you can see the 
the the the design philosophy or what they were thinking essentially and you they did want this character to stay up there well, that's what the philosophy is, that's right? what it tells me again even with what they were saying in the description of like oh this is why we changed what we changed i'm sitting there like what really like okay sure i mean all right you do you, where do you think he lands generally now if you're guessing for tier list where do you think he's gonna be Again, we, we kind of, what you just mentioned there is super important. Like, we have to see how this all plays out with the new changes to the mechanics and, and just kind of the new landscape of things. Things could be very different, and it's possible that, you know, wake up, drive, reversal. No, and... you have to be 100% right right now. So <laughs> no, sure I don't. Right. I'm adding that caveat in there and that to preface it because it is important. But, I mean, again, I never believed that this character was, like, out of the top five, really. I thought he was pretty darn strong. Um this kind of tells me he's probably cemented top five right now, if I had to guess. But again, I'm not going to say for sure. But I mean, I don't see how a character that was this strong before dodged essentially all nerfs. got a couple of small nerfs and then got buffs on top of that. How that's not a top five character. Um, again, I could be wrong there, but that would be my initial guess. It's the initial hot take, everybody. But again, we're you know, I'm not going to it's not a hill I'm willing he's to die big, on. He's a fat wiener in this, in this uh, <laughs> biggest big wieners and wiener. losers for sure yeah mm -hmm. um okay so a character that everybody is not at all emotional about jp steven i'm gonna turn this over to you i don't have the the and i don't have the drive gauge left yeah. in the tank right now to go too hard in on jp so i'm just gonna let you do your sure. worst how how amazing is jp now uh he's even better he is guaranteed top one he got nothing but buffs he is the best no uh they 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 out of the big three they hit him the hardest for sure um i, I to me it kind of ranks as Ken got it the, the easiest. He didn't get that many changes. Luke kind of got the medium porridge, as we were saying. He got some buffs, some nerfs. He should still be pretty good. JP got quite a lot of nerfs. Um, now, you and I are going to disagree on, you know, kind of the approach to this. Um, because, again, obviously, as a JP player yourself, you see that and you go, they nerfed my character. I'm across an Akuma the player. Well, yeah, now you're an Akuma player. As a former JP player, had you stuck with the character, you would have looked at those changes and went, damn, they nerfed my character into the ground. And on paper, I probably wouldn't disagree there. But I will say that, to me, the design idea behind JP should always have been more of a... He's got a ton of tools. He's got tools for, you know, almost everything and he's very strong, but he's very technical and you need to be able to put in that time and really understand like, okay, like crouching heavy punch is really strong, but I have to use it properly for it to be strong and I need to time it properly. I looked at him as kind of a, a Monat kind of character from Street Fighter V where it's like she has a lot of tools and she can be very strong, but it takes a lot to get there and it takes a lot to play. So that's how I always thought JP should have been. The nerfs that they gave him to me kind of say that that's where they're headed with him and so i go okay yes he definitely is probably one of the bigger losers in this patch especially for jp players but as a not jp player and as a not the biggest fan of jp i go he's probably more regulated now in a good way but again jp players are going to be like nope he's nerfed to the ground because again i, I can't really disagree with that fully this is stacked on a <laughs> long ass list of nerfs from february as well oh yeah they got, they got him twice they got him twice but that's they how strong he was. Twice, I mean, dude. okay, look, there's an argument to be made. Luke was definitely stronger, all that stuff. But JP had so much stuff to him. And again, for a, an archetype that is that extreme in being like a long range zoner, he can control the screen so much. He has things he can put on screen that, you know, with the portal spikes or, you know, OD amnesia has orbs that don't go away if he gets hit. There's a lot going on. And again, I don't think that's a problem to have, but there should be a proper balance of like, it's equally as hard to use that stuff effectively so that when you do use it effectively it's really strong but it shouldn't be that you know the majority of people can go in there or a lot of people can go in there and just do that stuff and and get it to work that way and again there's we've had a lot of discussions you and i about jp and his effectiveness and all that stuff and of course at the highest of levels he's playing a very different game and it's very hard to to do that stuff but there was a his barrier of entry wasn't high enough initially, and I think they're really trying to focus on that. And these changes will definitely help with that. But again, I, I there's a part of me that goes, yep, I understand if you're not happy with that because I get it. But I think overall, these changes will probably be better for the game. 
but definitely not better for JP so, players. <laughs> yeah, uh, so especially with the reaction that he got, let's put aside whether or not he actually was as good as people sure. thought he was or felt like he was, especially early on. The community did not want this character to be one of the best. And I get that mm -hmm. because when a character comes in and is playing Marvel versus Capcom mm -hmm. in a Street Fighter game, and, and, and JP wasn't necessarily doing that, but I I, I remember C Viper in Street Fighter 4 mm -hmm. feeling like, man, this is a Marvel character in a Capcom game. I don't want that to be one of the best. I want, you know, a Street Fighter character to be. And JP's really not a Street Fighter character. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, and with the overwhelming reaction that we got from the crowd, from, from people on social media, I think that this, like we were talking about earlier, is a character that Capcom does not want amid the best anymore. They, it's, it's a worse look. People, are, people see JP and they're not having fun. It's not an engaging uh, fight to win. Even if you figure out how to do it, I don't think people want to win that, like against, I mean, they wanna win, but they don't wanna play that puzzle. They don't wanna figure that puzzle mm -hmm. out uh, when they sit down to play Street Fighter to a certain extent, at more so than when they're playing against other characters. Right. And that's why you're seeing them take, you know, the, some characters you go, okay, they need to be attended to here or there. With JP, they've hit him in the neutral, they've hit him in the defense, they've hit him in the damage output, um, they've hit him in the utility, mm -hmm. they've hit him in the meter gain and, and drive gauge mm -hmm. uh, back and forth. They've hit him everywhere. And to me, they're going, this character needs to be mid-tier and we're going to make sure this character falls to mid-tier because similar to how I know we're going to talk about how grapplers, uh, for them to be the best in the game is a bad look. Also, it's it's similar to the whole Marvel vs. Capcom mm -hmm. thing. JP falls into that. Uh, the the community has decided, and this is this is not a character that can be top tier and people be having all that much fun. So, um, mm -hmm. with that, like just they they did give him a few little things here. I will say a standing medium kick hurt box was reduced, mm -hmm. and people uh, at least people that I play with tend to complain about that move being too good. It got a little better. Uh, OD spin. You guys remember OD spin? You've never seen it before because it's a move that was like literally mm -hmm. never used. And, and I, I couldn't figure out why. And I never saw Cockatoo use it. No one. Uh, yeah. That does a lot more now. It's It's got more damage, faster startup, cancels into supers one and two. So maybe if anyone's still playing JP, they'll use that now. <laughs> uh, OD fireball cancels into super on the first hit. So there's that. Although OD fireball also has damage uh, scaling applied to it. So it's also simultaneously worse and then command grab no longer whiffs when it's at too much advantage if you cancel and you've got a like a punish counter and crumple situation if you went into command grab off of that it would whiff because it, you were two plus now it actually combos and that's that is a buff but it's more of just like a quality of life sure. like dude if you went into this and you did all this it also by the way it is also scaled more so command grab <laughs> scales more uh, so mm -hmm. it's simultaneously buffed and nerfed so that they're like we're keeping you kind of low uh, mm -hmm. But the nerfs, on top of everything that happened in February, um, a bunch of his normals have now got bigger hurt boxes, so he's worse playing footsies. He's got some of the slowest walk speed in the game, so it's already not a great footsie character, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, standing heavy kick, which is one of his greatest uh, pressure tools, now pushes farther back on blocks, so he's not as a he, he doesn't have as much potential when he gets that in, in front of you. Mm -hmm. OD spike scales now. Um, yep. more uh, medium punch target combo scales more and it has a more punishable hurt box mm -hmm. in front of it heavy spin has more recovery and i think the reason for this was because you could um, sometimes you'd cancel in the heavy spin someone would drive impact and you'd actually have time to drive impact them back like on the last frame i think they added mm. two frames to this to make sure okay. that drive impact would work every time against that it. seems pretty fair um, at least i mean that seems pretty fair Sure. I mean, and in my opinion, so, that seems. I mean, he's doing heavy then, spin. I mean, that should definitely not like that. Should be a drive impact yeah. for sure. Like light spin, That's okay, I get fine. it. Yeah. <laughs> I will not contest any of this. <laughs> <laughs> and then Super Art Three how has uh, almost halved in its advantage um, after you've landed it. He's he's got like twenty frames or almost twenty mm -hmm. frames fewer of advantage afterwards and you're farther away from him. So the situation after Super Art 3 has been nerfed. So uh, with all of this, plus buffs across the board to a lot of characters that gave him a hard time to begin with, like weird ones like Kimberly, I think this puts him at like 
mid tier, mm. uh, maybe lower, maybe who cares? Maybe apathy <laughs> tier because like uh, I think a lot of us are just jumping ship over to. You've got a lot better mm -hmm. options at this point. If you want to continue to run the JP Gauntlet, fine, but you're probably not having fun. The people aren't having fun playing against you. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I want to bring up because I, I think you made a really good comparison in um, Sea Viper from Street Fighter 4, where that character had a very high technical ceiling, like her execution for her her main bread and butter stuff. You know, the the faint cancels, mm -hmm. seismo faint cancels were really difficult to do, especially consistently because her BNBs were literally stance cancel and then super jump like cancels out of it. And it's it was really difficult to do a lot of the time. So you had, you know, that character was really good, probably top five, at least top 10 for sure. But you had a handful of care of players who were really good with her. So it wasn't like everybody could do it. You just had a handful that were like, you know, Latif, who was incredible with her. Right. So I look at JP and I go. Imagine if you had C Viper, but the barrier of entry was much lower. And then you've got a ton of C Vipers everywhere. And yes, she's she's technical, but it's not as hard to get to that stuff. You would go, man, this game is rough. I don't want to play against this. This isn't fun. I feel like that's what JP was like before. Uh, and again, and if this if these changes make him into more of a character that is like, I guess a specialist character, like a, a character lo or a you know a character loyalist player, is is going to be effective with JP. That's probably for the better, honestly, because he's, he has so much stuff. And again, I know for current JP players and now former JP players, um, that's probably not the funnest thing in the world. But again, like his archetype and the tools that he has in this game, I feel like he needs to be a specialist character where it's like, yes, you can, he'll still be strong, but you really have to put in the time and you have to really like the character. Again, very similar to a Monat in Street Fighter V. Like that character was really strong, but needed to be in the right hands and needed to have the right amount of you know practice and studying and knowing all this stuff if jp ends up being like that i'm absolutely happy with that because he's a cool character man that's that's the terrible tragedy of jp he's an awesome character he's got really cool stuff it's just he was so strong that you're like dude i don't want to play against this like this is terrible he's too good but if he was a specialist character and he's doing all these crazy juggles and this cool stuff that's hype, dude. I'm, I'm down for that. And I think that's where they're trying to go with him while also probably playing some favorites here because Ken was just like, Pfft. they're like, all right, we love Ken. He's going to be real good. And we're going to all those nerfs we were supposed to give to Ken, we're going to give them to JP and probably some of Luke's yep. nerfs as well. We'll give them to JP. Um, so again, uh, you know, you are a former JP player. I don't envy you uh, for these changes here, but I think it'll be for the greater good of the game and the health of the game uh, eventually. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> well, let's talk about an upper after all that downage. Oh, yeah. Who do you got for one of your biggest winners? Oh, dude, Ryu. Ryu is one of the biggest yep. winners of this patch. Um, it's rare that we see um, a unanimous change that people generally want for a character and then it actually get implemented properly in a really cool way. Uh, and that's just happened with Ryu. Um, one of the biggest changes that people have wanted for that character was the ability to choose when you fire your denjin powered uh, Hadouken, right? Uh, because usually before in season one, he would stock up with denjin and the next fireball that he throws is going to be denjin stock. So you're going to waste it regardless. And there's no they, like they buffed him in February, but like they they only halfway went there. So the buff became something of a weird nerf, mm -hmm. but it was right on the cusp mm -hmm. of being where it needed to be. They hone that in, in in more than one way, but go ahead. Yeah, they, they turned what was like they finished giving him the buff. Mm -hmm. They bought him one shoe and they gave him the other <laughs> yes. shoe. Now he's got a full pair of shoes. Oh, yeah. And they kept decking him out, too. They got him some gloves. They got him a new jacket. He's got a new headband. He's yeah. he's fly as hell right now, dude. He's doing really good, but um, or he's doing yeah. really well. But he's also got better fireballs overall as well, which is which is great. Again, like that was the crazy thing about Ryu is that the fans have always wanted Capcom to differentiate him from the Kens, from the Akumas, and from the Lukes by encouraging his zoning and, and, you know, bolstering up his zoning abilities. And they've done that now on top of some other crazy stuff for his offense that's going to be really good. Like stuff like Solar Plexus, uh, Solar Plexus, like forward heavy punches, plus three on block now, uh, you know, instead of plus one, which gives him more advantage up close. Um, he's got... Uh, 
increased damage on several uh, different special moves and, and normals and things. He's got um, more meter build from a certain special moves as well. All Tatsus do more, more damage and get better meter build for super and drive gauge. Uh, he's, he's got buffed in utility. He's mm -hmm. buffed in damage output. He's buffed from far. He's buffed from close. He's buffed in a house. He's buffed with a <laughs> mouse, dude. I'm looking at this, and uh, uh, so you can go through all of the different changes, and, and mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of cool videos. MC Mora, uh, for instance, has a bunch of videos out right now, and I'm sure more to come of showing the specific changes. Not so much what I want to do here. Um, but like just what's it going to feel like uh, when you're playing as or against this character and why they're significantly different how this is going to change um, how they work within street fighter 6 and to me ryu now has tons of ways to get denjin mm -hmm. charged in the first place so that's a big deal because now you're going to be doing combo sequences or you just give him too much space and hey denjin charge mm -hmm. now he's in let's say v trigger mode and now he's also got a whole bunch of ways to make that uh, to, to make that augment either his damage or his pressure in the mm -hmm. setups. And a lot of times you'll spend it into a combo that also lets you charge up another one. This mm -hmm. character went from man barely hanging on in the mid tier to now he is a contender to the likes of Luke, mm -hmm. to the likes of Ken, to the likes of maybe even Akuma. We'll see how Akuma pans out mm -hmm. and everything. But on paper, he looks like uh, it's not just a well, why not play? the other shoto types mm -hmm. uh, why not play ryu um and and so across the board it feels like he's going to be much better in in just about every category mm -hmm. and so the fact that I, like his one big nerf is that well, let me see here it's a uh, od denjin hashogeki does less damage <laughs> and of course it would because he's going to do it 40 times around so that's just <laughs> fine i don't think anyone's worried about no, that so. because it just became so much more useful in mm -hmm. so many more ways and situations yeah. and uh, this is going to be yeah. almost a different character and he's already got grown man damage too so it's like that 200 damage reduction really in the grand scheme of things isn't going to do a lot um but what's even interesting about what capcom did with this character like it feels like they left no stone unturned because they gave him a couple of quality of life uh changes that you would only really know if you played ryu yourself but like um stuff like the level three super uh starts up faster if it's canceled into only from heavy punch uppercut and this was done because a lot of times you could end a juggle combo with heavy punch uppercut, cancel into level three, and it'll whiff. And they'll, they'll go flying really mm -hmm. high, or you'll get like the tail end of the non-cinematic version, so you miss your entire clip, punish. Clip, clip, clip. Yep, and so yeah. like now that's not going to be as much of a thing. You get more consistent uh, punish combos from heavy punch, into, or heavy punch DP into level three. Uh, the other thing that they did was after... Um, I believe it's back heavy kick now when it hits airborne opponents has a little bit of a ground bounce so that usually what he would do is he would do ex or od donkey kick and then do back heavy kick into uppercut but if depending on the timing if you messed it up he would spike the opponent down and your uppercut would whiff that's oh, not whiff. a thing anymore really as far as i can tell i tested it a little bit obviously there might be some instances where that happens but it looked like that was a direct change to make sure that that's not happening anymore which is awesome like they did so many things with this character where it's like ryu's finally getting the attention we all felt he deserved for years and like i'm very curious to see since season where he goes. one of street fighter 5 yep it's it's like we finally <laughs> he might have finally gotten back to a place of of respectable mm -hmm. ability where you're going to see him more regularly in tournament oh. and hey if there's a character that I mean, you never want anyone to be ridiculously overpowered and become a black hole sure. where just everybody's playing that character but if there's a character that it's okay to have prominent, it, it's Ryu, yeah, right? It's, it's the poster he's, he's boy. He's the poster of the boy. Franchise. Yeah, put some respect on his name, man. Like people like this character a oh, ton, they did. and yeah, it feels like they really did a good job with him. Uh, again, we got to see how it all plays out, um, but definitely looking like one of the stronger picks in season two here, right out of the gate. Let's talk about the character that got pooped on the most. DJ, do you have DJ as um, that as that character? The most. Uh, I, I mean, if it was JP, maybe, but yeah, uh, JP was, you know, definitely you know, got pretty DJ. hard. <laughs> uh, DJ is definitely another one of those that got hit pretty hard, um, and mainly yeah. because it feels like they um, they targeted a lot of his strengths and they kind of directly nerfed a lot of that stuff. Um, and then you kind of have the nerf to uh, raw drive rush, which again everybody knows. You know the meme. It's that's what DJ does. He does raw drive rush, and he's 
you know, essentially teleports into your face and you barely Turns even saw him. Yep. Kills you see the green flash and all of a sudden you're being comboed for 60% and you go, well, okay, I guess that's great. <laughs> playing the games, we're playing some Street Fighter. Um, but it's, they, they nerfed, um, he gets uh, nerfed indirectly by the, the nerfs to uh, Raw Drive Rush as well. Um, right. So they did a lot to this character that, uh, you know, man, they, they hit like... Um, some of his normals have less damage, or standing heavy punch has like a twenty percent initial scaling punch, now, standing heavy punch, which is a big move mm -hmm. for him. Yes, does more, scaling. does more scaling. Mm -hmm. So right there, right away, that's that's going to be worse. And everywhere that he's using that, his anti air, uh, I forget the the term, but his kick that goes straight up. Yeah, it's back heavy. That heavy. used to be a big deal because you could combo that into big damage. The combos, at least the ones that used to work definitely don't work anymore so you're gonna have to either figure out different routes or just take a little bit less damage in those mm -hmm. situations and everybody knows dj was a damage monster mm -hmm. it feels like a lot of that is gone um od sway kick scales more the low uh, kick scales like said, on, on the sway now which was a big a big tool for him he could just mm -hmm. do sway into the low kick uh, and get massive damage because again you would be teching yeah. or you'd be trying to you try I'm to hit him out of it shimmy. yeah basically and now that's got 20 percent initial scaling on it right out of the gate um, it's got more recovery, mm -hmm. um, like if it whiffs or if it uh, connects with our super armor, um, there's like they they hit a lot. Of, they did 20% um, damage scaling or initial scaling on OD fireball as well, which we all know is a big thing where we see him yeah. throw the OD fireball from full screen. Someone would land on it. He'd drive rush twice and then get a full conversion. Now that's going to do a lot less damage or a good chunk less damage, I should say. Um, they they hit a lot of his target areas and they they nerfed him pretty hard. They gave so they gave a few buffs. Um, Super Art One does mm -hmm. more damage. It recovers faster on block and hit, so you can still punish him from doing it. But maybe he'll uh, not quite as hard in mm -hmm. some scenarios, uh, and it has a little bit more pushback. Crouching Medium Kick has a better hitbox for what that's worth. Uh, maybe maybe some better combos out of anti air with that. You mm -hmm. know the little slide I think it is, and then target combo is slightly buffed, but. Uh, up against all of these nerfs plus the global nerf of um you know like, like damage output's going to kind of be generally less especially if you're using lights and and stuff in your mm -hmm. combos but also the drive rush raw drive rush cancels being nerfed that's going to hit this character more than any other character uh yeah dj he was he was a contender for top three ish before uh i don't think he's going to be anymore and he's mm -hmm. probably mid-tier maybe maybe even a little bit lower yeah, and also just another quick buff. I believe they buffed the um, the damage on uh, level one super as well, and they uh, increased the utility of like being able to combo after it hits. So he gets some more combo routes after uh, a little bit easier now, uh, which again is a cool buff. Um, but it's like you know, it, compared to the nerfs that they gave him, he got hit pretty darn hard. Which you're 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 gonna need to figure out sort of not maybe not an entirely new approach but a lot of little new approaches to playing this character he might feel like a different character in your hands and you're uh, probably going to need so. more openings during you know throughout a round to get the damage and stuff that you need so it's going to be a little bit of a longer longer haul with him i think just because of the overall damage nerfs and stuff but um again right. that's usually what dj is though he's more of a I hang back i throw fireballs i you know i space you out do all that yeah, stuff zoning yeah he's supposed to like it's supposed Why to be a... the best pounce in the game yeah, exactly <laughs> so it's like all right i mean I, I i'm i'm okay with that again i, I didn't play dj but I, I definitely think he needed some nerfs and it feels like they they addressed some of the stuff or a good portion of the stuff he needed to have addressed yeah hey dj mains or maybe former dj mains we Join up with us, JP man. We're gonna go have a drink after this. We're right? all gonna go play an Akuma um, session after this. So everybody yeah, in the yeah. sewing circle of Akuma players, let's do it. <laughs> um, all right. Tell me about Aki. Aki is one of the um, one of the characters I have as uh, one of the biggest winners from the patch here. Um, that character had a lot of interesting things, but it was. Um, her main issue was that it felt like a lot of those things weren't fully realized, um, and she, as a result, she was ended up being considered low tier for the most of the time that she's been out. Um, but they gave her a lot of interesting changes. Um, standing light kick is now a four frame startup instead of five. Her anti air buttons have gotten better. Uh, crouching medium kick is plus one on block now, up from minus. Did three. any of her normals not get better? It feels <sighs> like just about every single one of her normals either got faster startup, better recovery, more utility, something about it. But her normals got crazy better. Yep, uh, a lot of them did. She got a lot of uh, interesting other like utility buffs as well, where like 
uh, light punch whip, a uh, serpent lash uh, in neutral, or if it, when it punish counters, it causes a crumple now, even if they're, the opponent isn't poisoned. So she gets like, mm -hmm. she can use that as a spacing tool from further out. And if it happens to hit a stray or they were trying to do something, she gets a full crumple. She could drive rush in and convert. Um, the biggest change that I liked though was the, um, the buff to her venomous fang, which is like her leaping stab attack from the low stance. Um, oh, they can go into super now? Uh, well, that beats projectiles like cleanly the whole way through now, which was one of the issues I found with her initially, and I know a lot of Aki players have had as well, where beforehand it was kind of a case of she would have to crouch under the fireball with the low stance and then time it so that she's doing the leaping slash like right as the fireball passes her so that it doesn't oh. hit her. So like a lot That's of like times... like the torpedo one, Yes, right? the one she lunges We're completely about, okay, across I was the thinking about the... Yeah, the stabbies over. Yeah, okay. no, no, yeah, no. The one where she goes different. low and then she leaps across the, the the screen. It's usually used at like towards mm -hmm. the end of combos to like stagger and stuff like that, or to get the rolling crumple. Um, but it's like right. they've changed that now, where like she can react and just do it from basically whenever, and it's a full screen fireball punish. And on punish counter, I believe it like it sends them rolling back, so you get a follow up, and that's wild, dude. Like that's such like that's how it was supposed to work from the beginning. I don't know if that's going to be too strong on the surface. I want to say it's not, but like being able to just react to fireballs and go, OK, I'm full screen. I'm in my low stance and I'm, you know, there's Ryu throwing his new his, his brand spanking new fireballs at me. At any point I see that coming, I can hit that punch and go for the lunge and then boom, I get the full punish. And it's like that's interesting to me. And again, that was where my head went because I'm a, you know, I'm a Dudley player. I like characters that can go through projectiles so when i tried aki initially that was the first thing i'm like let me see how this works and then i was getting clipped out of it out of the startup by fireballs i'm like hmm that's this doesn't feel like it's fully realized yet now it's fully realized and i go okay that's that's interesting so we'll see what it does for her but i felt like that was a big buff for her i think they gave her neutral in what you're just talking about there as far as like trying to get close mm -hmm. especially through zoning but then also all of the buffs to her normals um she can crouch or she can drc drive rush cancel in with crouching medium kick and if she hits that there are all new routes that she can do from there now so that's the scary way that she can engage um she has a lot of buffs to her special move utility uh one of the changes or in their notes that they gave they said that she could get the damage, she could get the poison, but she had to jump through extra hoops and she had to spend mm -hmm. a lot of gauge doing so. And it's like, yeah, I remember getting comboed from her for a long time because she was, you know, doing all these cancels and whatnot. But now they've made it so that there's a little bit more utility there where she can get into the poison and then take advantage of the poison a little more effectively with her specials. Mm -hmm. They kind of gel together a little better now. So that's going to be something. And she's gonna do more combos but now aki does do a good amount of light attacks mm -hmm. in her combos and those are all going to cause the whole thing to be more scaled so there is that but she's also poisoning you no one's else doing poison damage mm -hmm. throughout all this so i think about that like that might just kind of balance all that out or it might even still be in the damage output favor but there's no way she hasn't climbed i think a substantial bit up the tier list so if she was like a bottom third character before she's uh uh, she's above the halfway mark as far as i can tell now maybe even a little higher yeah on paper here again we got to see how it all plays out and how all this stuff gels but like i've even seen some early footage with you know uh, her being able to counter um akuma air fireballs like properly anti-air that stuff with like standing heavy kick or crouching heavy kick and it's like and you know with the with the the change that they made in street fighter 6 with air fireball where it goes away when he gets hit now she's getting clean anti-airs on Akuma when he's trying to do regular air fireball, right? So she's got some really interesting stuff here. I don't know how that's all going to pan out because again, it's early. We're looking at this stuff on paper, but like, as you said, I don't see a scenario where she doesn't jump up several spots on the tier list, maybe closer to mid tier now, um, you know, maybe potentially more, but she, she got a long, long Christmas list of buffs here. And I, I think I was seeing people. And I don't on, think a single nerf. I, as far as I can tell, I don't think. But it feel, I saw some Aki players on Twitter being like, she got everything. She got the stuff we asked for. And it's like, if you're an Aki player or you were a season one Aki player, you're going to be eating good in season two. So it's, it's, it's nice to see. She's a super interesting character. She's really cool. She's got super high combo stuff. So that's. I'm really good with those kinds of buffs. For a we say like that, that now, but I feel that remember that conversation we were having about characters that are weirdly different than the rest sure. of Street Fighter. 
I think once this character gets a little bit too good, there's going to be a pretty strong backlash, maybe a serpent lash to uh, <laughs> her being that good because, you know, like if Fong was ever that good, uh, that would have been a problem. Like you could see how that would have been in Street Fighter sure. Five, right? Just because he's so different and weird. So I think she might fall into that category, but we'll see. And maybe she'll have a season or two in the in the spotlight and hopefully it doesn't break the game. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, how about another loser? Okay. I don't know if... Let's talk about Lily. <laughs> yeah, I guess Lily, we're gonna we're gonna rip the band-aid of, off. Let's do it. <laughs> one of the worst characters in the game in season one. Mm -hmm. And she did get some buffs. Mm -hmm. She didn't get the most buffs. She didn't get the most nerfs. But um I guess the way I would say it is considering how bad she was, she's one of those characters that when I see this list of changes, it's Capcom said Let's make sure she stays pretty low. <laughs> Steven, I know that you're 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 emotionally close to this character. Yes. How you feel in these days as a as a Lily main or maybe a former Lily main? Right. Um so yeah, I will preface this by saying this isn't just a my character didn't get the buffs that I want, so I'm mad well, kind of thing. It is a I wanted to kind of look at the direction they were taking this character and I feel like they don't really know what they want to either they don't know what they want to do with this character or they're scared to go the route too heavily which is still so bizarre to me because you could turn around and buff ken but you look at lily and you go i don't want this character to be too good and something they're seeing behind the scenes must be telling them that lily is way better than she actually is she, she got the least amount of buffs of the grapplers i think yes and the, right? the, the, the and least interesting buffing the other grapplers as well yes and yeah. exactly it's like the other grapplers got a lot of interesting tools and new things that they could do but lily kind of to me anyway the way i see it is they kind of just leaned into the linear stuff that she already does which was the biggest complaint people have had about this character is she doesn't have a ton that she can do that's outside of you know her game plan basically boils down to Condor, uh, you know, wind stocked uh, Condor Spire, 50-50 when she when you block it, kind of thing, right? And then of course you've got crouching mm -hmm. heavy punch in neutral, which was like her best button. Um, it was so which good. got a little nerfed. It got nerfed, and it was that's the thing. She's so linear that like the majority of the majority of time, Lily players, high level Lily players would focus on just doing crouching heavy punch in neutral because you literally wait there and go, okay, I'm gonna whiff punish, I'm gonna drive rush in, then I get corner carry, and then now I can start the business. Like, that's what it became. And it's like, they nerfed it, which I understand, but they didn't give her a ton of new stuff that's like interesting or really makes sense to me in the, in, in the case of like, you see what they gave to Zangief, you see what they gave to Honda and Manol, and you go, where was that extra oomph for Lily? They kind of, the best way I can describe it is, I feel like they gave her some of the things that she should have had in season one to be a fully realized character, but they didn't give her season two changes. Like they gave her the quality of life stuff that she should have had from the beginning that they never gave her. And now she's going to be again, kind of not playing Street Fighter six with everybody else. She's kind of behind the fence and everybody's, you know, in the schoolyard playing in the sandbox together. Lily's kind of ostracized and out there. And I go, why? I don't understand why. But to be specific about this stuff, um, one of her better changes was they reduced the the pushback on um, medium punch condor wind. So when she does her wind strike, it pushes the opponent back uh, less on hit, which means if you combo into that from up close, you are now in position to begin her 50-50 mix-up game plan that she does, right? It's either going to be command throw, light punch, or OD, or it's going to be a fast normal like standing light kick or now standing light punch, which is now five frame startup. Uh, it used to be six, now it's five. So you get that kind of 50-50 there. But one of the things that people aren't considering is that you need to combo into medium punch condor wind with a heavy button. So you're going to be doing like a crouching heavy punch or a back heavy punch, right? And in that scenario, you're going to have to give up all that guaranteed damage to go for that mix up again. And I go, I don't know how often people are really going to do that unless it's like at the end of a round where it's, you know, the punish you have isn't going to kill. But it's Street Fighter 6, depending on the resources, you're probably going to kill anyway. So like, I, to me, I look at that and I go, that's interesting. But are you really going to want to give up your guaranteed damage and your corner carry and your positioning for that potential mix up? Like, why would they go that route of all things and not make that more easily accessible? I, I it just confuses me. Um, but the other change, the big change that they gave her was... Um, OD Condor Wind now uh, combos off of Crouching Medium Kick, which is interesting because now she has like a low confirm into a special move, which is cool. 
um, or like uh, that that would be safe on block essentially. But her crouchy medium kick uh, got a little bit faster startup, but still super stubby. So I go, okay, sure, like that's cool to have, but how how effective is that really going to be in the grand scheme of things? And with her meter management being so important, how often are Lily players going to be willing to spend those two bars on you know that interaction? I mean would give you a guaranteed win stock, but at the expense of two bars, like maybe, like maybe it's going to be a thing. I, I don't know yet, but on hit, you don't get a lot outside of the corner uh, when you hit OD Condor Wind. So cool. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, she, she does get, she, I think will benefit more than not from the new wake up drive reversal because yes. she doesn't have good options for defense. Yes. Um, and maybe it's okay that her opponents will be using that because if she blocks it, can she command grab after she that? I should, guess it's yes, minus six, she will, right? Yeah, she'll be able to command grab, and now she'll be able to so get a jab get... punish as well because, um, you know, standing light punches five frames, so she could get a, a punch. Well, I guess she could have got it before because it was six frames, so that doesn't even matter. But yeah, she will benefit from it a bit. Um, and to that point as well, um, level one super did get uh, decreased startup, which is what we needed. It was 13 frame startup before, which is like one of the slowest level ones in the entire game. Now it's 10 frames, so you get more combos uh, into it from certain juggles in the corner, which is cool. But again, kind of like, like yes, it's that's a good thing, but it's also just kind of like, okay, sure. Like it's not the biggest thing, but it's definitely nice to have. Um, but it will work better as a reversal now, which is great. But it's again, it's kind of like that's what it should have been from the beginning. So I'm happy, but I'm kind of like, where's the, mm -hmm. where's the juice? Where's the, where's the oomph? Where's the season two swag? Like she didn't the, get any the of that. The thing that I was most impressed with, and this is not to say I'm super impressed by it, but most impressed with I think all of her changes is the standing light kick is now way more plus. Mm -hmm. um, that's key for a certain situation. So it used to I think it was plus one. Now it's plus five. Yes. And maybe more importantly, or well, differently importantly, it's safe on block. But this is an integral tool for hers because when she gets in uh, off of her Condor Spire, she uses this move to threaten against other moves. And basically this is a big part of the mix up, but it was kind of okay to just get hit by this. It's less okay now, although it's still not as scary as what a lot of other characters have for a lot less. And I think that's what you're kind of getting at with like, yeah, this is better, but compared or relative to what's going on with everybody else this is still fairly far away from uh being good and on top of all that this situation is so easily avoidable with drive reversal if she condor spires in mm -hmm. ex and it's wind clad she's spending two bars well you spend two bars to very easily knock her back but she's also spending a wind stock mm -hmm. and you guys are just back to neutral so she's actually kind of losing there mm -hmm. so and you don't have to deal with the mix-up right back so um, yeah, she's a little better, She, but I still think she's a big loser because she needed a lot more to be viable and she didn't really get it. And and then they did do some nerfs to like to offset too. Sweep second hit is now a high. She's got a bigger hurt box on uh, on her whiff command grabs. And, uh, and then we said her crouching heavy punch has a bigger hurt box. Mm -hmm. So they were like, let's make sure that she doesn't get too good. Well, and and uh, also, they did a good job of let's that. Forget, let's not forget the universal nerf to lights as well, to light punch or light attacks, standing and crouching, which right. start so with 20%. Right, so her buffed light kick. <laughs> well, not only that, like that's how she gets stuff started. And like she has to waste yeah. a ton of meter like to get a drive rush cancel and not get a ton of damage starting with lights. Now those combos are going to do even less damage and she's getting less out of that. And it's like... You can, you can come have a drink with us. <laughs> Players yeah. and J I'll, I'll bring the acoustic players. guitar while we'll sing Kumbaya around the fire and <laughs> all play Akuma together. It'd be great. <laughs> you know who's not invited to that are Zangief players because I feel like Zangief got a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. And and again, another one of these grappler types, but uh, this one they were not afraid to make way better. Um, instead of going through all of his buffs, which I think he just got buffs. Um, my takeaway here is, in all capitals, Hella builds more super now. Mm -hmm. uh, like, almost every one of his moves builds more mm -hmm. super meter. So that in and of itself, you're going to see more super from Zangief. Um, and what does that mean? Well, not only is he going to be able to do more supers, but he's going to have level 2 super stocked more often, mm -hmm. which means projectile characters are going to have to think twice more often, and he's going to have more of a threat through that. So that's a really important thing. Um, he's also much scarier now when he's close. He thrives. I mean, Zangief's always been scary when he's close, but now 
um he's got a lot less pushback so even when he's close up and he hits you you're not out of he's, he's not pushing you away into like a less scary area you're just still there and still dealing with all this situation as he builds that super up um zangief he does some lights so the lights might affect him a little bit uh especially with his standing uh his like light kicks i think they're gonna want you to use those a little bit more than you have in the past mm -hmm. they're more com comboable and also do less pushback but for the most part, a lot of these moves are, are mediums or his mm -hmm. charged heavy punch, crouching medium punch, crouching medium kick. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem that the lights are, are nerfed. This character is going to be doing a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. He's going to be doing a lot of supers and he's going to be scarier. Um, not only when he gets close, uh, he's going to be scarier, even scarier when he gets close up. Like this is a pretty big glow up for mm -hmm. Zangief. It was kind of arguable. If some people would put him at close to worst in the game. I thought he was like, man, outside of the bottom five. And I now so he's, mm -hmm. yeah. And now he might be, it's, he might be mid, he might be mid high. And it's starting to get scary zone for, for Zangief because then you got players that are like snake eyes with this version of the character. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's terrifying to me. I'm glad I'm not a JP player anymore. <laughs> Well, you gotta also look too. They gave him some wild stuff, and this is this is what I meant with the season two swag, like that Lily didn't get. Like with Zangief, his crouching heavy punch, which was largely considered almost useless by a lot of people, by Zangief players. And again, I can see why I played him for a bit. I understand now that move uh, causes a ground bounce on punish counter. It starts up faster. It's more active, and it moves for further forward when you use it. So now it can be used Neat. as a whiff punish tool. So he's getting a crouching heavy punch that ground bounces you, and he gets a follow-up combo off of that if he whiff punishes you with that. Which I go, that's awesome. First of all, that's great. But again, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little salt. Like, where was that for Lily? But anyway, we're talking about Geef. But he got a ton of great stuff. Um, he also got some quality of life change stuff with um, his standing medium punch target combo, which is basically standing medium punch three times. He does the triple chop. Uh, that was uh, used a lot as a whiff punish tool, but because of its range and because of how it worked, a lot of times you would miss the follow-up chops as well, even if you had a good read and you reacted properly. So now there's less pushback on the first hit, um, and that stuff should be able to um, it should be able to combo more consistently now from further out, which is great because that's a great whiff punish tool, and it gives them a quick check to just kind of knock you out and you know, knock you down and, and you know move forward a little bit. Um, so they they kind of hit a lot of the areas that he needed as well, and and they just went buff city, dude. Take all the buffs. Here you go, Zangief. And again, I'm happy about that because Zangief is really fun to play in this game. So I, I'm happy to see more of him. And I mean, he's he's got a ton of stuff. He's definitely to me, he's mm -hmm. definitely one of the biggest winners of the season two patch. So these are kind of our our immediate big winners, losers plus the big three jp fit into the biggest losers uh blue and ken kind of were in their own little categories there but we do have some more honorable mentions and this isn't to say that there are not some really interesting other mm -hmm. character changes and and such but these are the ones that sort of resonated with us the most probably going to be the most maybe you might say change on the tier list mm -hmm. sort of a situation um maybe not lily lily's probably sticking around <laughs> where she was but yeah but uh you wanted to talk a little bit about honda and honda i don't know if he's going to necessarily move all that much but he's an interesting character because he kind of needed to change the way he functioned generally was a little bit watered down a little bit silly and people were ultimately not having a lot of fun playing against them or as him so he needed some significant changes and uh capcom took a, a real whack at that and tell me what you what you're seeing with honda yeah um so Honda has been kind of known as like a um, he's been a problem for uh, lower lower ranked players and stuff like that because generally he can spam his headbutt and his butt slam and it's pretty difficult to deal with uh, unless you know the proper counters like perfect parry or uppercut like to get him out of um, headbutts and stuff like that generally that has those two moves have been causing a lot of trouble similar to how we saw the um, Shiva's uh, stomp in a MK11 and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was a problem where it's like you can just kind of keep doing this uh, and it just works and it's too difficult to stop, uh, which kind of drilled that character down to like that's all he kind of really did because the other stuff that he had just wasn't as like effective and it was interesting, but it just took a lot to kind of bring it together. So I feel like with what they did with him uh, in season two here, like 
they've kind of addressed that and given him more interesting tools outside of those two moves. And while they nerfed those two moves, they also made them a little bit better on hit and stuff like that. So they kind of gave him a little bit of a consolation prize there. Um, but that should hopefully address the just like, that's all this character does. You run into a random Honda online, he's just doing sumo headbutt and sumo butt slam and that's it and it's over and over again and well i blocked the first three and now he got me with the fourth one and he punished countered me so now i'm getting juggled and like that's all he did right and you would have hondas waiting there and down backing the whole time just waiting to do it and you're just sitting there waiting to see him reel back before he you know flies forward uh hopefully with these changes that they've kind of made um he won't be so kind of basic and vanilla like that. A little more versatile character, yeah. Absolutely. And they gave him uh, more ways to uh, get his sumo spirit buff out. He can do it from his, uh, I believe it's medium punch into uh, down forward heavy kick target combo. So it's a knockdown with stomp. He cancels that into sumo spirit. Now he's got, um, you know, he can cancel into 100 hand slap from different normals. And they've increased the amount of normals that he can cancel that from now. So he's got like crouching medium kick into 100 hands with that. He's got, I think, sweep into 100 hands as well, which he's got like a cool side switch now that juggles with sweep. And they gave him some really interesting things here. Uh, standing medium punch moves forward now, similar to like Mano Mano's uh, standing medium punch for pressure. And I think they gave it better advantage on block. Um, so they did a lot of good things with him, or sorry, on hit. Um, but they did a lot of stuff with this character to kind of round him out and make him more of a full-fledged character that's not just condensed down to headbutt and, and butt slam and, and so it's i'm curious to kind of see where where people go with them and hopefully this makes him a little bit more of a an actual presence in this game because you just don't see honda players like outside of the ones you see online every now and then you just you don't see them yeah, you're right. I think they they are making him a little more versatile, and that's a good look one way or another. Uh, he doesn't need to become the best in the game, but he needs to become a little bit more interesting and a little more multifaceted, mm -hmm. and that's what they're aiming for here. So, um, the other big one here, an interesting character is Blanca. Mm -hmm. Blanca has been secretly really good for a while. <laughs> Mena showed us all what he could do, and people were crying about him. Mena was saying recently that uh, you know you just haven't labbed him. He's a, he definitely had some really strong stuff, and I think he was definitely a top 10 character, maybe even a little bit better than that at Season 1. But he was that way for a couple of gimmicky reasons, you know? He has like a V-trigger, and he's got this um, air EX ball that's plus 8, and and, and um, all this like kind of weird, you know, and that's been Blanca for the longest time, sort of a trolley character. Uh, but they, they were really effective. Capcom's made some changes to him now. I know Mena was like, it's been good, but they, like the character's <laughs> dead, something along mm -hmm. those lines. I think that's a little bit too much. They attended to OD Aerial Ball, so now it has more recovery and it won't hit the backs of opponents. But like that was a crazy weird thing. And I don't mm -hmm. think he needed to have that to win. Um, it was just sort of a, like a weird gimmicky thing. You got hit by that and you're like, that was just silly. Um, Blanca Chan scales a little more now, so... And that's something. Um, some of his normals have some frame data nerves, and um, a few normals have frame data buffs. Uh, and Rainbow Ball got a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So I see all that, and I go, I think Blanca is gonna. Well, first of all, he still has that V trigger super two, mm -hmm. right? So that like that's still there. Um, I think he's gonna be just fine. I think he's not gonna be top tier, and I think that's where Capcom wants him. I don't think they want a top tier Blanca. I think they want a just outside of the top 10 Blanca, and I think that's what these nerfs, uh, well, widely the nerfs are, are aimed to do. But they did give him a little bit of something, which tells me they want to keep him relevant. Just not crazy and not... I don't even want to say he was stealing away rounds, but I say that and I'm like, yeah, that, that word kind of works <laughs> yeah, in certain scenarios. They definitely targeted um, some of his biggest problematic moves, which like uh, crouching medium punch was a really good normal and neutral. Um, now that has a bigger hurt box, so you could whip punish it easier. Um, the, the air uh, Blanca ball, the rolling attack, uh, was just too good. It was too good. It was essentially... Um, instant air lightning legs with Chun-Li but just amplified because of how safe it is and it's a throw bait and you can continue it with a combo after like it was just too much so now that's been regulated more which is probably one of the main reasons that you know Mena is saying his character's dead uh, and then they've got Cause stop. yeah because yeah, you can't do that stuff anymore which is like sure um, I could see an argument for that but um, the other big one like you were mentioning is um, 
the Blancachon stuff has now added uh, 20% of initial scaling, and then combo scaling is, is up from 10% to 20%. So all the crazy mm -hmm. uh, Blancachon mix-up stuff and combos that you were seeing, uh, some of the two-touch stuff we were seeing recently before, you know, Season 2 dropped, some of that stuff is getting toned down with damage pretty heavily, which is nice. It should make for some, you know, it's going to take more interactions to and more mix-ups to win with him now. So he's he's definitely scaled back more. Um, I don't know how many people are going to stick with him now that some of the, the crazier stuff that he had has been nerfed, um, but I feel like he's still going to be a pretty solid character. Uh, if you decide you want to play him like i think he's still going to be pretty solid he's just he's just got some of the craziest stuff toned down which again it's like that stuff is fun but probably needed to be toned down for the overall health of the game and the competition yeah it, it feels like it's an okay and i and i i think like i say he'll still be very relevant mm -hmm. he just won't have some of the goofy crazy stuff that uh no one was having fun with except for the silly Blanca players. So you know what, you guys, <laughs> you can come over and do a shot. You can't yeah. have a full beer with us, but you can come over and do a shot with us. Not invited into the circle, but if you want to bring a nice potato salad and hang out at the at the lunch table, that is totally fine. We'll absolutely, uh, you know, embrace you there. But yeah, <laughs> we won't throw you out. Um, okay, I, I had a few more honorable mentions. I, 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 so like Jamie, just really quickly. He got a lot of buffs. Uh, I don't know how they're all going to add up. They sound really scary. He can get through fireballs a lot more effectively now. Um, he's going to be building more meter. He's got more um, utility in a lot of his uh, in his normals and his specials are safer, things like that. He did get nerfed to his um, tension, but that was kind of understandable given how clearly powerful that was, especially as you buff up other things around him. Um, the character is definitely going to move up the charts. To, to what extent? I'm not sure yet. Uh, maybe a lot. We'll see. That's a character to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. So uh, a potential big winner there. He's got a long list of buffs. Mm -hmm. I'm just not exactly sure how they will all interact and how they will all add up or if they will multiply together. But someone to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. And then Marissa. Marissa, I think, is one still the big damage doler outer uh, of the game. Absolutely. Uh, and, and she got a few little nerfs, but for the most part... Capcom wants Marissa players to kind of be pushing forward and doing her big swinging moves. They'll capture you in proximity block more quickly, some of her charge up moves. Um, she's uh, she, Her command grab is not quite as good. It's not as much of um, a situation afterwards, nor is her level three. I think there were some situations where she could basically checkmate you after level three mm -hmm. if your life was too low. Um, and, and that's not gonna be the case anymore, right. but she's got a long list of buffs. Um, next to her name here, so she might become significantly better. I I don't want to say Abigail season three better, but <laughs> no, but she's it, kind it's, of in that that arena yeah. of like same similar type of character. And, That's exactly and right. So. They're, they're trying to push her in that direction and kind of emphasize like, okay, this is the damage character. This is the character that once she gets in and she locks you down, it is terrifying. And if she hits you, it's even more terrifying. And they kind of took away a little bit from her, you know, her command throw and the Yoki and stuff and okay after level three like they they nerfed some of the areas that she probably needed nerfs and then they kind of bolstered up her what she already does well uh so like any player marissa players that do well with that stuff are going to do even better um so it's it's I, i'm happy with those changes too i think she they, has potential they made sure. her their big haymaker type moves and their big jump in type moves even scarier in certain ways and then i gotta say too that she's a character that you would use parry against a lot and parry yes. has been notably nerfed in this game it's got more recovery mm -hmm. i saw a uh, clip from big bird where he uh he used you know like someone parries against him it's not the right call but he's pretty far away he drive rushes forward goes into the clinch and then command grabs and it's a punish counter and it seems like it's an eternity mm. so i gotta wonder with the, the parry changes if that's going to really benefit marissa because you're you know a lot of her moves are telegraphed and big wind up so you're naturally going to parry but like and, and some of them you know break armor mm -hmm. so you can't di against it so you're naturally like okay i'm just going to use parry as my main tool against her that's not going to be as good and now it's going to be more baitable by her so that might add up to a lot so marissa is another character to keep an eye on um and we'll see and and there's a lot you know like well, the there's a lot of changes to a lot of characters that they, they got both buffs and nerfs like Cammy and, mm -hmm. and Jury and, and Guile is kind of scary sounding now with the way projectiles are going to work. So there's plenty more to mm -hmm. talk about. But man, I, I think these are the ones that uh, off the off the page before we've really had time to actually play with them against them and such. 
are the ones that stand out to us. But we would love to hear from from you guys, the audience, and which characters you think are going to be the biggest winners, the biggest losers from what we're seeing thus far. If you think anybody has just totally got the short end of the stick or got way too much, we'd love to hear about it. Um, while you're doing that, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, right? Because it helps out the channel. Uh, Steven, did you have anything more that you wanted to add about these uh, these changes before we wrap things up? Uh, just that it's, you know, I, I think that we're moving in a pretty interesting direction with this game. I do think that Capcom hit some of the uh, the bigger issues that we've been seeing. Uh, one of the biggest complaints being that um, the risk for doing a, a perfect parry attempt wasn't wasn't enough. And now with that new recovery, that is definitely uh, going to be a thing where it's, you're going to have to think twice about that stuff. Because as you were saying just then, you know, players, you know, people, people were playing Marissa or characters with command throws and things like that are going to be able to punish you a lot harder from that. And it's going to deal a ton of damage. So you got to be a little bit more careful with that. But curious to kind of see where this all shakes out, especially with Akuma, because we're, we're not even talking about him in all of this because we're just focused on season two balance. But like... That character, I'm very interested to see where he goes. Um, I am going to be working on a review for the website uh, of Akuma, so stay tuned for that as well. Going to see what I think about him and, and you know what what he can do. But uh, overall, I think we're moving in the right direction um, for this game, and I, I think it, it looks like we're Capcom is tightening up the ship a lot right now, um, and pretty happy with the changes overall. But of course, Lily got kind of the short end of the stick. But hey, you know what what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm excited for season two hope you guys are as well and uh hey we'll see you in it